Hi, we are I am so edgy. Our team consists of me, Brayden, Jarek, the hardware engineer, and Meng Shin, the software designer. It has been months of hard work and finally we have come up with this robot. And now I shall pass it on to Jarek to explain the hardware of the robot. First, let's start with the hardware. This is the iron product. It is a 23cm by 20 by 20 design. And at any given time, it can store up to a maximum of 3 victims, also known as ping pong ball. In the front of the robot, we have a huge grab and lift mechanism to grab and lift the victims and store them in the cage on top of our robot. There is also an ultrasonic sensor to detect for any obstacles in front, as well as get distance from the victims in the evacuation zone. At the back of our robot, we have two sets of interlaced axles and rotate around the walls to dispense ball as shown in the video. From the bottom of our robot, we have two light sensors as shown. These are used for line tracing, sensing for green squares and coloured lines on the field. So how did we get here? To answer this question, we have to go back in time to when it all started, Wednesday the 24th of February 2021. We first started by watching past year competition videos to get an idea of what possible ways to line trace, pick up and dispense victims and avoid obstacles. Through an hour of watching videos, we have decided on having two colour sensors as we needed to detect green on either side of the line when meeting a junction, and an ultrasonic sensor, low to the ground, pointing forwards to detect for obstacles and victims in the evacuation zone. On our next session, we quickly built up a simple test robot to test out different parts of the robot on it, mainly testing the light sensors as they would be very hard to change later. For example, with this, we could test the different distances between colour sensors, so when building actual robot, we would not need to adjust it and it will be perfect. Subsequently, we tested out distance sensing. We realised that if we put both heights horizontally, accuracy will drop as the bottle is round, and due to ultrasonic sensors working by one side sending ultrasonic waves and the other side receiving, the waves might bounce off the round bottle and into another dire direction, making ultrasonic sensors do not receive waves and decrease accuracy of sensor. Thus, we adjust it to be vertical as shown in the top right. However, what we did not realise was the fact that we would need to pick up the victims later on, and due to the victim's short height, a vertical light sensor would not be viable. Next, as anticipated, the motors may not be powerful enough to move up the slopes, we decided to gear the wheels down. By doing so, it would probably be much easier for a robot to move up the slopes. We decided that we have tested enough, and started on the actual design of the robot. We realised the problem listed on March 3rd, and changed the ultrasonic sensor back to horizontal. By moving the brake to the back of the robot, it made the robot much more compact and much more space on the top, so that we, it is able to store more balls and easier. Not only that, the brick buttons are also more accessible compared to the previous design and easy to press buttons on the back. On our next session, we built a grab and lift mechanism. Originally, we wanted to use a mechanism where we push balls against the wall. However, due to this year's field having no walls, we decided to do this grab and lift mechanism instead, actively searching for the balls as it will be faster and in this case, as there is no wall to mean start an ultrasonic sensor, it will be easy. This is how it works, as shown. Afterwards, we attach the grab and lift mechanism and added a third motor so it's easier for us to create the release mechanism around the limitation as we were not sure which method to use for release. Subsequently, we built the release mechanism onto the motor and it ended up with a revolving door light mechanism with interlacing axles. The motor turns L shaped axles simultaneously to push the balls out and block the balls from going out at the same time. We refine and adjust it together with the grabbing mechanism. To conclude, we first read up rules to identify the needs and constraints. Then we researched by watching past year videos. We then imagined, thinking of possible solutions to pick up, dispense, and detect oxygen obstacles in front of the robot. Afterwards, for picking up, we selected a promising solution of grabbing and lifting the ball and actively searching for it with ultrasonic sensors. As it was faster than combing through the entire area, and there was no walls this year in the evacuation zone to mislead the ultrasonic sensors in thinking the wall is a victim. For dispensing, we selected the promising solution of a revolving door-like mechanism as both allowed the ball to be held in as well as dispense them without the wrap. With all this in mind, we started to create the prototype robot. We then tested parts of the robot, testing small things like the distance between the two light sensors, improving on them when needed, finally arriving at our finished product as shown. Now I shall pass it on to Ming Shin, our, our software engineer. Thank you. This is the overview of the code. Now, let's look at each part individually and see what they do. We calibrate our sensors every time we run the code, so sensors will be calibrated no matter where we use our code. This is needed as there is a tower where we have to move forward though there is no light. And with this, we ensure that on white or on any solid color, both color sensors will have the same intensity and the robot will go straight. This code snippet is at the start of our code. First, we put both color sensors on white and we press the button to confirm. Then we get the proportional of the right color sensor to the left and save it as the offset variable. We finally press the button again to start the main program. We use proportional line tracing by making use of the two color sensors. We first multiply the right color sensor's value by the offset to make both values the same. This works as, let's assume, on white. Left returns the value of 50 and right color sensor returns the value of 100 for reflected light density. As stated in the previous slide, 
the uh, offset value is the proportion of the right color sensor to the left. The right color sensor value divided by the left. The offset will then be 2 as 100 divided by 50 is 2. Thus, if both are white, the difference of the calibrated right sensor value is 0 and thus the robot will move straight. For turning and junctions, we use the two color sensors to sense the field as the robot is moving. As the robot should turn only when the green square is before the black line, we sense for a black line first, before moving back to sense the green square. Once the left color sensor senses a green square, it will turn to the left, and similarly, if the right color sensor senses a green square, it will turn to the right. When both sensors sense green, the robot will do a 180 degree turn. If it tries for 4 times and is still not green or blue at any side, it will assume that there is no green at the junction and thus should go straight through to the other side of the junction. As seen in the previous slide, the check for bottle function runs in the forever loop. To check for the bottle, we check if there is anything less than 7 cm in front of the robot, and if so, we will run the move around bottle function. The move around bottle function basically makes the robot turn right. Then, it checks for all four sides around the bottle if there's a black line. If so, it will turn away from the bottle and start line following. After sensing the red line and going into the evacuation zone, the robot checks to see if there's anything within 50 cm in front of it. If there is, we will move to it using the distance divided by the circumference of the circle to get the rotations needed to get to the ball. We then adjusted the value to make it more accurate and precise. If there's nothing 50 cm lesser in front of the robot, we will start rotating clockwise, while checking if there's anything in the 50 cm radius. If so, we will go forward and grab it with the same method listed above. We then check the other direction for a full round, and if there's nothing, the robot will turn back and go forward 5 rotations before checking again. The main code is in the evacuation zone function, which is called when both color sensor senses red twice consecutively with a delay of 0.1 second. The check for red line function is called every time in the main loop. We decided to move to the collection zone first. This is so that we have a constant starting point and it will be easier to code the other part out. To achieve this, we use the fact that the bottle cannot be picked up by our clock and run clockwise around the perimeter of the evacuation zone and try 4 times to pick up the same object. If it takes more than 3 tries, we assume we hit the evacuation zone and continue on. Next is the function scan and collect. The robot goes to the middle as shown and turns. Then it will start a loop of going forward, turning to the right and checking for ball. If the robot finds a ball within a radius of 50 cm, it will go towards the ball, grab it and return to the original position. The robot will do this until it picks 3 balls or when it reaches the end of the evacuation zone. Finally, it exits, turning around, returning to the collection point and dropping off the 3 balls and finally exiting the evacuation zone to continue line tracing. Now, let's talk about our design process of our software. On our second session, after building the test robot, we started on line tracing. We consulted our trainers and teachers to learn more about proportional line tracing. In the end, the line tracing worked well and was able to navigate through our test field using line tracing. Next, we tried to send screen or line tracing. This time, we ran into quite many problems. One of the main problems we had was that green would be sensed by the sensor when it's halfway through black and white. Therefore, it messed up the turning of the robot. Afterwards, we tried experimenting with more line tracing and solved the problem we had the previous session. We added a weight block before checking for green again, and if both the second and first check is green, the robot will turn in that direction. We then tried to improve our line tracing by making the robot turn when sensing green. However, we had a problem which was the robot might sense blue instead of green. To solve this, we sensed for both blue and green, but this has its own issue which was that there may be false positives in which sometimes the bot senses white as blue. On the next session, we adjusted proportional multiplier to make the line tracing smooth. Subsequently, during this session, we got the competition field, which our teacher kindly printed it for us. We tested our robot on it, the color sensor does not really work. We then thought that perhaps block cooling was not suitable for it, due to it lacking a raw color value, RGB, which was really important for us, as the robot could not easily identify the green color on the field. Therefore, we switched to EV3 Python, we experimented with it, read the documentation, and consulted our teacher. Later during our next session, we tested the green classifier, which basically checks whether it senses green, and if so, we turn accordingly, since we had to restart our code all over again, so they are line tracing, and we had to do it from scratch. In the end, we got the proportional line tracing to work. However, during our next session, after doing some EV3 Python, we could not make the green classifier work well. Not only that, we realized that we do not have enough time to start all over again from scratch if we were to use Python. Therefore, we switched back to block coding. Next, we realized that instead of checking for any green, we will check for green behind the black line. This is because we realized that green will indicate direction of turn for an intersection point, and when there is an intersection, both color sensor will sense black. Thus, we can check for both color sensor being black, then moving backwards to sense green for green. Also, we made line tracing better by calibrating both color sensors before the start of every round. Now, let's conclude on our software design process. Firstly, we read out the rules to identify the needs and constraints. Then, we researched by watching past year videos, reading documentation, and asking our trainers. We then imagined, thinking of possible solutions to code the picking up, dispensing of balls, and detection of obstacles in front of the robot. Afterwards, for line tracing, we planned by selecting a promising solution of double color sensor proportional line tracing, which has been used by seniors during past years. Our trainers also recommended us to do so. We then coded it out, tested, and continued to refine and improve our code, such as the proportional values and adding an automatic calibration. Now it's time for the not awaited testing of the robot. That's what I would have hoped except COVID struck and threw us all back to our homes. As we do not have the competition fields at our homes, we are unable to film the testing. And thus, we have come to the end of our presentation. Have an awesome day.